So has Wago gotten enough of Ideal's market share to where Ideal has said, hey, we need to start making our own lever nuts that are very comparable to the Wagos, but they do differ in some areas. And in some areas, I actually think that the Ideal's are a little bit better. So for instance, they both have a two wire, a three wire, and a five wire connector. But one thing the Wago 221s do have that the Ideal lever nuts do not, are these inline connectors. Along with that, the Wago 221s do have some sub-series that are capable of handling some larger size wires than the new Ideal lever nuts do. When it comes down to the price difference between these though, there really is a big difference depending on how many or the quantity of the Wagos that you buy. Now currently with the Ideals, when you pick these up, you're gonna get like a bag like this and they're all sold in bags of 10. So you can't just buy these in higher quantities as of the time of this video. And if you compare it with the price of the Wagos, if you were to only buy 10 of these, then the Ideals oftentimes are just slightly cheaper or right around the exact same price. But a lot of the times you can buy larger assortments of the Wagos, larger quantities of whichever one you're wanting to get. And when you do it that way, you can actually save quite a bit of money buying the Wagos over the Ideals currently. So in the area of cost, I give it a little bit of an edge to the Wagos if you buy the higher quantities, but overall, if you're comparing apples to apples as far as buying 10 of each, it's pretty much a wash. The way that these work is they've got these levers that are up here on top, and when we flip them into the open position, you've got these ports over here on this side, and it's at this point where you could take your wiring, insert it into one of those ports, and then flip that lever down. Then take your next wire and insert it in the same exact way, flip the lever down, and now these two wires are locked into place. They are connected together using this bus bar here. And that is what is then continuing the flow of electricity, connecting these two wires so that the electricity can pass from the feed wire to your load wire. So super quick and easy to use. And the same thing goes for the ideal lever nuts. You just flip up the levers, insert the wire in, flip the lever down, insert the second wire, flip the lever down, and again, these two wires are now locked into place, they are connected together, and again, while we can see this strip of metal here, this is not really the bus bar, the bus bar is actually up above where the ends of the wires are, but it acts the exact same way in transferring the electricity from the feed wire to the additional load wire. And then of course, if you ever just wanna switch things out, all you have to do is flip the levers up on these, and then just pull the wires out, and now you're free to change out your wiring or whatever it is that you're trying to do. All right, but now let's take a closer look at these and see where these are similar and see where they're a little bit different. And when you put them up together, it looks as though they're pretty much the same size. If I stack the Wago on top of the Ideal, you can see the Ideal just slightly protrudes out a little bit further when it comes to the width going this way. And if we compare the length of them, if I flip this over so they're butt to butt, you can see that they are virtually the exact same length going this way. But where the big difference comes into play is when we flip it over here to the side and we compare their height, you can clearly see that the Wago is not as tall as the Ideal is. The Ideal gets quite a bit taller because their levers are higher up on the block. And while it's not a huge difference, it is definitely noticeable. So the Ideal would take up just slightly more room inside of a box. So overall between the two, while the Ideal is slightly larger, it's not gonna be a huge noticeable difference as far as the amount of real estate that is taken up in a box. But if it's a big deal to you and you're wanting to make sure that you're getting the smallest splicing device possible, then the Wagos are slightly smaller in that respect. But now let's compare the specs of these. And all the specs can be listed not only on the packaging, but on the connectors themselves. So we'll start with the Wago 221. And on this particular model, you can see up here, we'll list the wire sizes it's capable of handling. And it says it's capable of wiring sizes from 24 gauge all the way up to 12 gauge wire. You can also see where it says that this is capable of 450 volts and 32 amps. If we flip it over here to the other side, you will see we have a strip gauge here. This is telling you how much insulation to remove from the wiring to get an optimal connection within this splicing device. So you're able to just take your wire, put it up onto that gauge, and then know exactly how much of this insulation needs to be removed. 
Now, if we take the ideal lever nut, we actually have to turn it over here to the bottom and all of the information is right here on the bottom as opposed to two sides. But as you can see up here at the top, it says this is also capable of 450 volts at 32 amps. So that's the same as the Wago 221. If we flip it just sideways a little bit, it's a little bit easier to read. It says the wire gauges that this is capable of handling is anywhere from 24 gauge all the way up to 12 gauge wire. So again, the exact same as the Wago 221s. And then right here is another strip gauge, just like the Wago 221 had. However, the Wago 221 wants about 11 millimeters removed of insulation from the wiring. But here on the ideal lever nut, they say that they want 12 millimeters of insulation removed from the wiring in order to have an optimal connection. So when it comes to comparing these two, as far as specs go, Neither one of them edges the other out because they are both essentially the exact same and what they can handle when it comes to voltage, amperage, and the sizes of wire that they can accommodate. So another cool thing about these Wagos is they make it really easy to test for voltage or continuity. But if we flip it over here to the side, I don't know if you can see that hole or not right there, but that is a test port. That is where we can insert a probe from a multimeter and we can test for our voltage and make sure that we have voltage present with the Wago. Instead of having to remove all the wires and testing the wires, you're able to just use the test port and you can make sure that voltage is present and what voltage. Now the ideal lever nuts also have test port, but instead of just having one, they actually have two. If we flip it over here to this side where the wires get inserted, if you see this little hole down here at the bottom, this is one area where a probe can be inserted to test for voltage. If we flip it over here to the other side, there's another hole right here where you can also insert a probe and test for voltage and continuity. So it just makes it a little bit easier than with the Wagos in regards to the orientation that these are in in the box, which one is facing you the easiest without having to move a bunch of wiring around. Because of course you're testing for voltage, which means that your wires are live. So it just makes accessing that a lot easier and maybe it can even be argued safer. And I also do have to point out that here on the Wago 221 inline connector, there's also a test port right there in the center. So you can also do the same with the inline connector. All right, so I've showed you the correct way in order to use both of these devices as far as lifting up the levers, inserting the wire in, and then pushing the lever down, and then it's locked into place. But one thing that some people have pointed out to me in the past is with the Wago 221s, if you take a wire and you just force it up into the 221 without lifting up the lever, you can do that. It does take a decent amount of force to actually be able to push it up in there, however, but you can eventually push it up in there and it does lock into place. Now, while this is possible and the people in the comments that said that you can just do it that way and it's easier, we're technically correct that you can push it in and it will lock into place. I have not found anything from Wago in their instructions or on their website or their videos or anywhere that says that that is an acceptable way of installing a wire into their Wago 221 series. Does that mean that it's not going to work or not work properly? I would argue, no, it'll probably work the exact same as if you lifted up the levers, but it's always best to follow the included instructions. However, there is a difference in that regard when it comes to the ideal lever nuts. It's not included on the instructions with the bag, but on their website, when you look at the specs of this and you look at the instructions as to how everything is installed, they do include where you can just take the wiring and use it like a push-in connector and just push it into place. And I will say it slides into place a whole lot easier than trying to force it into one of these Wagos. So in that regard, it can make installation a little bit faster. And I will say again, it is incredibly easy to do. It slides right in and it locks into place just as if you were to use the levers. And now for me, the biggest area where these two differ, and if I was to give just a huge advantage to one of these two, it would actually be to the ideal lever nuts. One of my biggest pet peeves with these Wagos is when I lift up the lever and I insert my wire into that port, lift up the other lever, insert another wire in, flip that down, we're all good, we're connected, everything's good to go. But I have heard from electricians, I have heard from people in the comments, and I have experienced it myself to where when you go to push this back into a box, 
because the levers, as you can see, they're very easy to just kind of flip up into that position. Now in that position, the wire is not just gonna come out. It's still locked into place. It does take away from some of the holding integrity just slightly, but it's really not a big deal at all if it's like that. Again, the wire is not just gonna fall out. But because it's so easy for these to come up into this position, when you're pushing wires into a box, say it's a crowded box, it's not that difficult for these levers to catch on another wire that's in the box, the box itself. Your main focus is just placing these wires, pushing them into that box, and getting them placed in a way to where then you can insert a receptacle so that there's room for the receptacle or switch or GFCI or whatever you're installing. You're trying to push this as far back into the back of the box as you possibly can. It is super easy for you to not really be paying full attention to where one of these levers gets caught on a wire in the box or the box itself. And in your pushing in there, that force of you pushing it in there, it accidentally flips up one of these levers. And now you've got a wire that can just easily fall right out of the connector. And because of that, that's why in some of my previous videos, I talk about if you're using these, I recommend placing your thumb over those levers while you're placing it into that box, making sure that they don't get caught on anything and that they don't flip up. There's also been a lot of people suggesting to use electrical tape to hold the levers down, and you can certainly do that as well. But if we hold these up side to side with the levers going in the same direction, if we flip the Wago up, again, there's those ports right below the way that the levers flip up. Whereas if we flip it over here to the side on the ideal, you'll see that it's going away from the way that the levers flip up. The levers are not facing towards where the wire gets inserted. So if we hold these side to side, here's where you insert the wires. If we flip them both to the right, you can see how the levers are going in opposite directions. But as you can see, since our wires are coming out here and our levers are facing away from the levers, when we go to push this into the box, all that force that's being pushed into the box there's really no chance for these levers to get caught on anything. They're actually gonna be pushed down even more as you're pushing this into the box. Now, another thing about these that's really cool is, if you remember, if I take this Wago and I just take my finger across there, look how easy it is to start getting those levers to pop up. Well, something that's really cool with the ideal lever nuts is when I rub my finger at the same force across those levers, they won't just pop up. And that's because if I do open these up, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little piece of plastic here towards the front that's sticking up. And what that is for is it is to insert into the levers themselves into these little notches or holes here. So when these get locked down, see how it's just resting there? But if I could push down on a little bit more, it a little snaps into place. I don't know if you heard that or not. I'll do it again with this one. You can see how it's up a little bit. I'm pushing on it just slightly and it's not going down if I give it a little bit more force. See how that snapped into place? And so these are actually being held down into place by a little piece of plastic. So it's not as easy for these to even get started to be flipped up. So with the added safety features of this one and making it pretty much impossible for that to happen, in my opinion, that is a huge win for the ideal. So between these two, which one would I be picking if I was doing a project? In my opinion, you just, you really can't go wrong with either one of them. They both compare equally as far as specs go, and it's ultimately gonna come down to your personal preference and probably more so availability as far as how quickly you can get them or if you have some already. They both clearly have some of their own pros and cons when comparing the two. So again, ultimately it's gonna come down to what you prefer as far as which pros did it for you and which cons maybe eliminated the other device and then deciding which one you want to go with. But for your convenience, I'll have links for both of these, including the inline connectors and other models that are available with the Wagos down in the description down below where you can check each of these out for yourself. Now, if you'd like to see a real world application where I really do actually like using these, I just recently did a video where I show how to install a ceiling fan and I use these Wagos because we're using that stranded to solid core connection and I do actually really like these for that type of work. If you're interested in seeing that, I'll post a link to that video right over here and it'll take you directly to it. So I hope that you found this to be interesting. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.